black holes eject tachyons in the form of jet stream clouds of iron gas moving faster than photons. As these tachyons travel outward from the galactic core black hole's poles, they are gradually pulled downward in a vast toroidal arc toward the poles of the stars in the galaxy around the core black hole. All of this occurs, usually, invisibly, since the energy of gravity is traveling faster than visible light. However, the result is the variances in precession of the electromagnetic poles of all stars, planets, and non-tidally locked moons. At the moment when the core black hole poles of two nearby spiral galaxies align, a wormhole forms in the deep space void between them, and this acts as a form of lens through which to view the universal depth of the past and to perceive the multiverse of baby universes that exist beyond now within the future. During this event, that is, through this temporal wormhole, you will be able to see the entire cycle of the past as it revolves around to connect to the far end of the future, and vice versa, because the singularity before our own local universe expanded is the same as the singularity inside each offspring universal timeline past the multiverse. Thus, all the galactic core black holes poles are interconnected along filaments, by occasional alignments that transmit a gravitic pulse along the single-dimensional superstring formed of all filaments. This is, in fact, occurring all the time. However, the effect is invisible to the naked eye because we perceive only electromagnetic radiation on the spectrum field below the velocity of photons in a total vacuum. Because there is no absolute emptiness in all space, photons encounter resistance against slower matter energy's quanta, and the result of this friction is entropy, which we experience as age, change, and the passage of time. The warping of light by gravity causes the appearance to our eyes of the cosmos as we believe it exists around us now. However, the further we travel away from a gravity well, the less impeded by space time becomes, and the faster light can travel. Thus, light warped from a galactic core black hole can either bend around toward the galaxy's star's poles, or it can accelerate beyond the speed of time experienced near stars to pass between galaxies instantly. Thus, the entire lifeline time span across which can be measured the existence of any given galaxy is equal, below the speed of light, to, above it, a parallel baby universe of dark energy and antimatter. When we look at light traveling along this wormhole's pathway, between the aligned poles of two or more galactic core black holes, we can perceive the combination of each galaxy with its reverse temporal counterpart to comprise a baby universe within a singularity inside each galaxy's core black hole. However, the lens of the singularity dividing a galaxy in space-time from its paired antiparticle partner in time-space is the same for our own local universe as for each of the smaller, baby universes that our local universe bubbles off into the future. In other words, the singularity of the present is now adjacent to both the continuum of the past below and the future above. The concept of a wormhole is that a particle entering one side of it will exit out the other in less time than it would take for a particle traveling at the same speed to reach the same distant point by traveling along the path of least resistance in a perfectly straight line. A wormhole is conceptualized as a tunnel through hyperspace that bypasses subspace, that is, a path of zero time resistance with no entropic breakdown that supersedes our standard reality. A photon can enter one end of a wormhole and come out the other end simultaneously and likewise an electron can quantum tunnel from one end of such a tube to the other in zero time. 
In the standard model, such as depicted in this Feynman diagram for a photon, it exists along a wavelength of time between one event moment in space-time and another, because at the starting end it formed from a pairing of a positron and an electron, and at the opposite end it parted their pairing and sent flying off in new directions one positron and one electron. Since there is no such thing as deep space entirely devoid and empty of all energy, positrons and electrons are perpetually colliding to form photons, and photons are perpetually colliding with one another to break these subquantum pair bonds apart. However, in the proper elemental conditions to perceive distant spaces along the axis of a wormhole through zero time, we can see that the photons comprising the fabric of the electromagnetic effect can themselves be sped up past their maximum velocity in an absolute vacuum, and that thus solid matter can travel faster than time. Wormholes can cross intergalactic filament distances by moving matter energy through the voids between them instantly. Just as positrons and electrons pair and part as photons, and photons pair and part as electromagnetic spectral matter energy. So, at their fastest speed, these pairing and parting collisions freeze and do not change at all, existing eternally, invisible, in zero time. In the same way that on the surface of our cosmos, the present space-time continuum, if measured along an axis of time, we find wormholes into the past and future, connecting the 1D singularity at the core of our own local universe to the same singularity reflected in the core of each baby universe, which form over time out of matter-antimatter bubbles combining parallel dimensional galaxies, reflected within any spiral galaxy's core black hole. So we can, if measuring shapes forming in space rather than patterns over durations of time, see that the surface of our present continuum is a flat plane with the Big Bang at its furthest event horizon, that closer to us from then are galaxies, which contain within their core black holes, on the surface of which are wormholes that connect to the interior baby universes inside the core black hole. The four elemental and four-dimensional force-carrying quanta including tachyons as the particle carrying the force of gravity, combined to comprise a fifth form in the series that is equal to each individually as well as to all of them combined into one. The 1D singularity, the 2D galaxy, the 3D black hole, the 4D wormhole, and the 5D baby universe parallel the sets, respectively, of rationals, integers, counting, natural, and irrational numbers. And just as we have learned that the four number sum sets below the rationals all have one-to-one -one correspondence to one another within the infinite set of all rational numbers, so too can we model each trait by scale upon the surface of a single model that combines all of them overlapping into one without changing the function or form of any of the smaller parts. We see here the fabric of the space-time continuum as a grid of purple on black emanating from the yellow Big Bang in the upper right corner of the chart with twin spiral galaxies, one clockwise, the other counterclockwise, depicted in yellow, whose core black holes are enlarged and shown as a blue torus around a black sphere with a yellow pole emitting red gas jets to arc into blue toroids surrounding the yellow galaxies. Emitting from these poles below the surface of the fabric of space-time in a green spiral history, is a small baby universe reflecting the inverse of its parent galaxy. Between the two galaxies, below the surface of space-time, is a yellow and purple time tunnel, or wormhole. Quantum Astrophysics Part 2b4 Entropy 
via the space-time continuum. Now that we have examined the various different features of our space-time continuum that exceed into the future or supersede into the past, let us more closely examine the nature of our own present event in the local universe. To do this, we will be looking at the process of matter-energy exchange for a single quanta of space as it changes over time. From the point at which the continuum's photon surface forms from a positron-electron pair bond until the point at which it has recycled through its entire possible history of phase changes and once again reforms into a photon from a positron-electron pair bond, we will be looking at 18 stages. In order to familiarize ourselves with this model for the surface of our space-time continuum, we begin by depicting space as a black line above and time as a blue line below, while we measure the activity of the present moment as a series of phase changes to a single quanta of space over time in red. Later, we will also add solid matter in green to the red field of energy between black space and blue time. 1. We begin by seeing the surface of the space-time continuum as we might imagine it to occur usually as a basis. As such, we see time below, closer to the past, and space above, closer to the future, with regular, straight, and directionally alternating red field lines of pure tachyonic energy between them. This composition constitutes the moment of universal critical mass following the division of the four forces one Planck time after the Big Bang. 2. Time begins to bow upward toward space and assumes a bell curve wavelength because space exerts gravity. Gravity warps the motion of photons, and photons measure the surface of space-time over light years. We see the usual beginnings of thermodynamic heat and cooling occurring as convex and concave currents. These signify the original motions in space over time of the particles of the four forces. 3. The so-called standard arrow of entropy determining the measurement of time as change in a forward motion of space begins to arise as a result of extreme gravitational warping to time by the particles of the four forces of space, dividing the convex currents outside in the future from the concave currents inside the past. 4. This results in the formation of tachyons as the first form of energy prior to the existence of any form of solid matter, precursor to the formation of the four force elemental particles. Tachyons form a pair bonding combination of entropic time with the currents of temporal energy to form temporary solid matter from pure time. 5. Our own local universe's history begins when matter forms, seemingly from a form of more eternal energy that exists prior to the creation of our own space-time in the form of a temporal singularity. Inside this temporal singularity, space-time, our own universal reality, will begin to expand and to grow ever more complex on its surface. 6. The measure of space over time in the form of photon light years begins with the event of space-time breaking off from time, between time and space. Inside this event is where space-time will begin to grow, and outside it remain the faster-than-photon energy of tachyons. 7. At the first moment of time, there is a random quantum fluctuation that occurs as the time inside the event that broke off from the timeline surface of time-space to move toward the surface of space-time